Meanwhile, the U.S. is training anti-government activists from the Middle East and North Africa on how to spread democracy with the help of technology. But as RT's Guy Nature Chican reports, there could be a hidden agenda. The U.S. is providing high-tech help with innovations for anti-government activists in a number of countries throughout the world. One of the latest developments is the panic button. According to the State Department, the application can be uploaded on activist cell phones. Should they be detained, the software instantly erases the contact book in their phones and sends a warning alert signal to other activists. Sounds great. One push of a button and it's all gone. Probably among those thanking the U.S. government for the technology are going to be drug dealers and terrorists. But American officials, of course, claim the best of intentions, saying the innovation is to protect pro-democracy forces in other countries. To help use the technologies more effectively, the U.S. has organized training sessions for thousands of activists. The one held just weeks ago in the Middle East included anti-government campaigners from Tunisia, Egypt, Syria and Lebanon. And as the newly trained and equipped activists return home, the U.S., as one State Department official put it, counts on the ripple effect. Foreign interference doesn't have to be a military invasion, a bombing campaign, or you know some kind of special operation on the ground in that country. It can also be the training and funding and this political support given to individuals who then promote those foreign interests. And that's one of the newer strategies that the U.S. government has successfully been executing in different countries around the world that it doesn't consider subordinate to their agenda. And it's a way to do it subtly. Uh, that's, it, it's harder to detect it, it's harder to denounce it, and it can often be more effective. The U.S. perceives the internet and social networking platforms as major tools for spreading democracy and pumps millions of dollars into developing systems to help people in the Middle East and China get around internet blocking firewalls. But at the same time, American companies provide Bahrain, Saudi Arabia and Kuwait with the technology to effectively block websites. When the U.S. government purports to be spreading democracy, it's simply a sham, it's a pretense, it's a lie. The goal of U.S. foreign policy is to put its people in public office in foreign countries. The U.S. military has recently launched an online management program which enables it to generate multiple fake identities on social networks. The false personas are designed to contribute to the flow of conversations on Facebook, Twitter and other websites. People are using social media for cyber warfare. I mean, and that's what we're going to see more, more and more of, I think. From, from whether it's governments or non-state actors, they're going to try to find ways to use the internet and social media to gain an advantage in their own battle. The recent turmoil in Libya suggests orchestration of Twitter with fake users. Only around 5% of Libyans have access to the internet and the number of Twitter users there is so small that analysts couldn't even calculate it. Yet, in February this year, a surge of Libyan Twitter accounts appeared, reporting in English and virtually all begging for intervention. We know that in, in, um, since the beginning of the war that Libyans no longer have access to the Internet, but uh, somehow people don't check uh, this uh, essential fact and they take all this information coming from social media at face value, which then serves the broader purpose of fabricating the news. Trained activists provided with panic buttons and other technologies, scores of false identities on the internet spreading certain ideas. The U.S. says it's all about promoting democracy. But do these declared intentions justify direct interference in other countries' domestic affairs? I'm going to check out reporting from Washington. Our this is something, uh, although uh, we, we see this concept of cyber war, information warfare playing out with sock puppets and fake Twitter accounts, this is something the CIA has used since its creation, using the media, the popular media at the time, to uh, push out its propaganda. Of course, we just heard in that story that, that actual Internet access in Libya is so small, just 5%. But yet we hear about the role of these Twitter, uh, you know, activists and activists on Facebook that are, you know, can tweet and say, we're being killed, we're being massacred, we need help, you know, those sorts of things. 
Is the joke on the U.S. if the if the U.S. is really looking at these as uh, as evidence that intervention needs to be the answer? Well, I think the U.S. is probably behind the, the, uh, the these Twitter uh, feeds. Uh, so we don't do even know the if United they came from Libya. They mm -hmm. could have come from neighboring Arab countries where people, you know, are, are, are conversant in Arabic, or they could have come from outside the, the region as well. They could have come easily from Langley, Virginia, or a number of military uh, bases where uh, there are cyber command activities uh, present that do this type of thing. But we see a, a, a relationship, and we've seen this for quite some time, between uh, the U.S. intelligence agencies and Google and, right. and others that uh, obviously they, they know uh, who butters their bread and they're going to uh, do what the agency asks them to do or in the military, the Pentagon. So you can put up the firewalls and take them down. It depends on the situation. I would say that the U.S. right now would be very interested in creating a firewall in Bahrain, for example, I where they want to support. I believe that the U.S. corporations already censor the Internet in Bahrain. Do you believe the government is behind that? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. We're, we're, we want to support that regime because we have a huge naval base there and want to keep it there. Same thing with Saudi Arabia, Oman, and, and other countries. But what leads you to believe that there's actually that exact line where the U.S. government can actually influence a corporation when things hit the fan in Bahrain to say, hey, censor the internet? Oh, uh, the, the, the cooperation between uh, the, the U.S. government and U.S. Um, uh, high-tech uh, companies is legendary. Uh, AT&T, Google, it's, it's across the board uh, we see this kind of... Uh, uh, situation. The CIA even ha CIA has its own venture capital firm called InQtel that actually provides seed money for a lot of these high-tech firms that come up with some of this sensorware. And then there's the power of corporations though, that they have uh, to over Washington, which also influences it the other way. So it's uh, difficult to see how the things shake that's, out. That's Thanks so right. much, Wayne. That was investigative journalist Wayne Madsen.